if we have this information, it could save a lot of lives because we are going to talk about what are the signs of colon cancer. And colon cancer is something very, very necessary to be informed nowadays because it's something that has been growing and the cases have skyrocketed in the last years and it's something that it's going to keep being the same way if we don't do something about it. Because we think that colon cancer is just linked with our genes. And this is something that we have because our family, because my ancestors, because something in, in my genes, in my DNA. This has nothing to do with my habits. I have nothing to do with recovering. This is something to, that just happened because of, <laughs> I don't know, something out of this world happened to me and this is why I ended with this disease. When we go deeper and we try to see and we try to find the root cause, we are starting to see that actually there are a lot of things that happened during the life of the individual that has colon cancer and there are things that we can do about it before if we have colon cancer and during the treatment and afterwards. But there are also signs that you need to be aware of in order to know that if something happens like this, you need to have to go to your doctor. What are the amount of cancers that are related with our genes? Take a guess. I bet you put a number in your mind and it's going to be much higher, just somewhere around 5%. But the rest have everything to do with the way that we live our lives. So we need to remember what are the functions in our body from the colon. And most people think that the colon is the same as, as the small intestine that it's needed for absorption of nutrients and that is not true. What we absorb in the colon is mostly water but the colon has if you want to see it has like three specific functions that we can point out. First of all it's the excretion. After the colon we have the sigmoid and the rectum and then we have where the anus where we excrete everything that we eat. The second is for rehydration. Anyway, rehydration, what does that mean? What we drink, what we swallow from tears, mucus, all the production uh, in the mouth of saliva, in the esophagus, in the intestine, in everywhere, all the water that it's coming and it's draining down the gastrointestinal tube and gets to the beginning of the colon most of it needs to be reabsorbed back into your circulation so we don't dehydrate. So all the fluid that is mixed with the food that we are end up getting in our feces, most of the fluid needs to go back into our circulation, like suctioning everything back in. So we can start in the whole process making all the feces drier. The third one is from our microbiota. Although we have microbiota in every single space, in every single surface, inner, outer, everywhere, we have microbiota. We have bacteria, viruses, parasites, and fungi that are everywhere in our body. In the colon, they are going to be very, very important and very, very necessary. And remember that the functions are for our immune system, for metabolism, for inflammation, for in the small intestine, they have also a relationship with the way in which nutrients are absorbed and with the barrier. But in the colon, mostly we're going to be talking about immune function and inflammation. So when we go and see the rate in which colon cancer has been growing in the world, we need to remember that in 2020, 1.9 million people were diagnosed in the world with colon cancer. This is like a thief coming through the night that is visiting us and we have no clue what's coming. And the, the bad thing is that when we go and diagnose colon cancer, most of the times it's too late because we don't know the early signs. So that's why we want to talk to you about the early signs and how you can take care of your colon. So what are those early signs? Number one, any abnormality in your feces. If you're switching from having a, any habit and then you're going to be chronically constipated or if you're going to have a lot of diarrhea out of nowhere or if you're going to be switching in between diarrhea and constipation, diarrhea and constipation and there is no other cause for this, go and see your doctor. Something might be inside of there. Number two, if you have blood in your feces, it could be hemorrhoids. Fine, go to your doctor and check that it's that. But it could come from a tumor that it's bleeding on the inside and now you're getting blood in your feces. So never ever having any amount of blood is normal in your feces. Number three, if you get a blood work and your CVC 
shows that you have anemia. Having anemia shows that the production or there is a high consumption or you're wasting red blood cells from anywhere in your body. So it could be that you're not producing, go to your doctor and he might see that you're not producing enough. But if you're bleeding and maybe you haven't noticed that in your feces you're eliminating part of your blood because maybe it's mixed with everything else and you might just think that your feces has become maybe darker but that could be blood that it's mixed with your feces and there you're losing blood and that's why you have anemia. Number four, if you have chronic abdominal pain, it's not normal to have abdominal pain. If you have chronic abdominal pain or acute abdominal pain that it's very painful, go and see your doctor or go to your primary care physician and get him know or her know that you're having this because this is not normal. This could be an early sign and a lot of people when you talk to them, they say, yeah, well, I had some pain, but I thought it was nothing. I took some Pepsi or I went to Tupamaprosol or whatever because I thought it was gastritis or I took some or laxative because I thought I was just constipated. And when, when you go and see, the signs were coming and coming and coming like a train that you hear in from far. Now that's nearer, nearer, nearer. And when people go and see the physician, it's like having the train over here. Number five is if you're losing weight and there is nothing you're doing to lose weight. There is no cause to be losing weight. Colon cancer is one of those cancers that make people lose weight without doing nothing at all. There are a bunch of cancers that do that, but colon cancer is one of them. If you're losing weight and you're not trying to lose weight or doing anything at all, and especially if you're losing more than 10% of your weight, please go and run and see your physician. And number six is if you're having chronic vomiting. If you're vomiting, it's not just because something is going on in your stomach. It could be something going on also in your colon. Because remember that through the vagal nerve, all the GI system is interconnected. And there are some abnormalities in your colon that might be affecting your stomach in a way that the problem is in your colon, but you're being affected and getting the symptoms in your stomach. So if you're vomiting and vomiting and vomiting and there's nothing else going on, please go and see your physician. What's the best way to diagnose it? The best way is to get a colonoscopy and to get a biopsy because all colon cancers come from this formation inside of the colon that we call polyp. Not all polyps are cancers, but all cancers come from polyps. So if we go, we make colonoscopy, we see inside the colon, and we see a polyp, we always have to get a biopsy and get that to the pathologist so they can see in the microscope and to see what's the kind of polyp that you have. It could be infectious, inflammatory, or it could be a cancer that it's just starting. Most of the times when it's just a polyp and then when it's resected, then everything is cured and nothing happens. But this is something really that if you have a history of colon cancer in your family, although it's not the only thing, that means that before maybe starting 35 or 40 years old, you need to start having colonoscopies more often. In the regular population that have no relationship with your genes, it's recommended that maybe every five years after the the age of 50, you start having a colonoscopy. And if you have any risk, maybe you can make it every one or every three years, but that's gonna be only by the recommendation of your GI doctor. And again, remember, the best thing we can do is prevention and early detection. And these signs that I just gave you are very important. If you think you have any of these signs, please go to your physician. Please ask him or her to get you a colonoscopy and a biopsy. And in that way, we can be changing the health system. Why? We don't need to change the system. We are the system. When we change our minds and we, when we start as a community being owners of our health, really things start changing. And that's the only purpose of this channel and of this channel and the, all of the things that we've done in Spanish already. So again, if you want to support us, it's very easy. Please just remember to share the video. There are a lot of people that maybe want this content and just hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. Please remember to hit the bell. So every time we make new videos, you're going to be the first one to be notified. Thank you and see you next time.